Hello everyone and welcome to Hats Off. I'm your host and childhood best friend, D'Angelo Edwards. Recently, I've been watching a lot of anime to relax during these stressful times. Sometimes the world feels a little bit better after stuffing your brain full of isekai, but I've also been on the lookout for some more classic shonen to watch as well. If you don't know, shonen is basically manga and anime made with the intention to appeal to boys. And it's one of the most popular genres out there, with huge juggernauts of the industry like One Piece, Dragon Ball, and Mistake. I'm just kidding Kubo Sensei, please I just wish it was better. But thinking about these animes got me thinking about one of my favorites, Yu Yu Hakusho. Now if you've never heard of Yu Yu Hakusho, I'm gonna give you a 5 minute head start before I come for you. But for the rest of you, I'm sure you know it's the classic tale of a delinquent that dies saving a child and is then given the job of spirit detective, wrangling evil demons, ghosts, and monsters. It was a huge hit, and even to this day, it's considered one of the greatest shonens ever. And a lot of that comes down to its incredibly strong cast of characters, like the cool aloof Hiei, the ever-likable Kuwabara, and the refined but deadly Kurama. Even most of the side characters are memorable. But the character I want to focus on today is the main boy, our jerk with a heart of gold, Yusuke Urameshi. But instead of just diving into his journey of becoming the coolest demon slayer to ever rock a pompadour, I instead want to explore how Yusuke's personal character growth, especially in the Dark Tournament arc, is a direct attack on toxic masculinity. Now, a lot of people seem to think that when people talk about toxic masculinity, that they are attacking the idea of masculinity itself, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. There is nothing wrong about the traditional ideas of manliness, being strong, being tough, but toxic masculinity is when those ideas are used both as an excuse to harm others and yourself. Like, it's okay to want to be strong, but it's not okay to think that you expressing your emotions makes you weak. A lot of it is ingrained in our everyday society, with boys being looked down on when they express sadness or fear, or when they take up hobbies that aren't typically seen as manly like art or cooking. You know, that thing that everyone should know how to do. Society is dumb like that. But in Yu Yu Hakusho, we get to see a character whose good heart and support group helps him to break free from the cycle of toxic masculinity. Yusuke is a punk kid. He gets into fight, messes with girls, and skips school to smoke. He does this because he wants to be cool, he wants to be tough, he wants to be a man. And it's stuff like this that he thinks will make him a man, when in reality it's exactly these things that firmly plant him as a child. And it's not like he's this way for no reason. His dad is out of the picture, his mom does nothing but smoke, drink, and party all day, and most adults just write him off as a lost cause. He's bitter, he's angry, so he lashes out, rebelling against the world and indulging in what he thinks are manly acts. But Yusuke isn't a completely bad person. He doesn't attack the weak, well except Kurabara. <laughs> And he has a soft spot for kids. In fact, it's thanks to this soft spot that he ends up getting hit by a car trying to save a kid. He dies and while he's a spirit, he sees that people actually do care about him. His mom is lost without him. A teacher mourns his death because all he wanted was for Yusuke to make something of himself. And his friend Keiko is beside herself with grief. Even Kuwabara cries for him as Yusuke was the only person who ever pushed him. This stirs something in him, and he decides to take up an offer to become a spirit detective, because if he does so, he will be returned to life. This is his first step to healing. It wasn't force that changed him, it was emotion. The love felt for him that he was so afraid to give back. But this is only the tip of the iceberg. Sometime later in the series, Yusuke is told he needs to be trained under someone to stop their techniques from being stolen by demons. Normally in this kind of show, the master would be a wise old man or some buff Jojo looking dude. But not this time. Yusuke's new master is Genkai, 
a frail looking old woman, the complete opposite of what you would expect, and Yusuke feels this way as well. But she is strong, much stronger than him, and over time, Yusuke's bias is soon replaced with awe as the two become student and master. It's super refreshing to see this kind of thing happen. Having a woman as one of the strongest characters in the shonen is something that's rare even today. So the fact that this happened in the 90s is nuts. Not to mention that these two are great together. Sure, they argue and fight, but Yusuke gains great respect for her, and she puts a lot of trust in Yusuke. It becomes this really sweet relationship that's probably one of the best master-student things in Shonen, and it really shows growth on Yusuke's part. The old Yusuke never would have stuck around the train under this old lady, but he's matured, he's opened himself, and he's ready to see what kind of person he can be. However, on the other side of this coin, we have Tagoro. Tagoro is this giant, hulking man that seems to be the embodiment of strength. He has power, money, influence, everything that society says will make you a man. But it's what he has done with these gifts that contradict it. Once Genkai's lover, he threw away his humanity to become a demon in an attempt to gain everlasting strength. And after becoming a demon, he went on to kill hundreds of people, both friend and foe alike. While he fights with honor, his actions lead him down a dark path stained with blood. He sacrifices everything, his home, his humanity, his relationship, all in the pursuit of strength. This is toxic masculinity. This is what happens when you only think of proving your worth by how strong you are. And with Tagoro, you see a lot of the things that makes it so easy to slip into. He's haunted by the trauma of losing people close to him. So much so that out of fear, he gives up what makes him him. Trading a short yet sweet life with Genkai for an eternity of fighting and bloodshed. He is afraid, afraid of what will happen if he is weak, afraid of growing old and frail, and he clings to the idea that as long as he is strong, he doesn't have to be afraid. This is how toxic masculinity works in real life as well. Guys are afraid of seeming weak, because if they do, they'll be a target for other equally scared boys. So we puff out our chest and try to act hard. Stunting us emotionally so that when we have kids, we teach them the same thing and the cycle continues. It's sad, but true. Especially in the black community. But in Yu Yu Hakusho, Yusuke seems to break that cycle. In most shonen animes, the main character usually goes through some sort of training to get stronger. To hit that breakthrough point, you know? Goku going Super Saiyan, Luffy hitting Gear 3. Bobo Bo doing. Let me see! Whatever this is, look, the point is, there's usually a part where the main character gets a lot stronger all at once. Usually powered through anger or righteous fury. But in Yu Yu Hakusho, the training is a little different. While he does his fair share of standard shonen training, it eventually gets to a point where, in order to beat Tagoro, Yusuke must take in all of Genkai's power and make it his own. The process to do this causes immense pain, enough to kill him, but Yusuke takes it on to get strong enough to win. For days, Yusuke writhes in pain, screaming and bleeding until he is nothing more than a tattered mess. He accepts that he wasn't strong enough to take it and that he will probably die, right there in the cave. The only thing he wants in the world right now is a drink of water to ease his dry throat, when suddenly his prayers are answered and his pet spirit beast manages to get a few drops to him. Now this spirit beast is tied to Yusuke and reflects how he feels, emotion, pain, Everything that Yusuke feels, the beast feels it as well. 
So for as bad as Yusuke is hurt, the spirit beast feels that pain too. And even with that pain, the only thing on its mind is helping Yusuke. Because the only thing on Yusuke's mind is helping others. That is the character of Yusuke Yurameshi. He doesn't want strength for the sake of being strong, and he's tired of hiding his feelings from the world. And when he sees how selfless the spirit beast is, the embodiment of who he is as a person, that's what pushes him over the edge. So when a rock starts to fall on the beast, Yusuke forgets his own pain, and he acts. And that is what it means to be a man. It's not being the strongest. It's not about never being sad or showing emotion, talking big or anything like that. It's about protecting the things you love, using your strength to defend those who need it, encouraging instead of breaking down. Being a man does not mean hiding your weakness. It means accepting it. And that's what Yusuke does. He has rejected what society shoves onto men and has embraced his inner self, both literally and figuratively. A lot of shonen is just about becoming strong physically, being the bad guy, saving the girl, trying to figure out who has the biggest beam. My beam's the biggest. No, my beam's the biggest. Walking around in gray sweatpants just so everyone can see just how big your beam is. And I don't dislike stuff like that. I love stupid shows like Dragon Ball Z and Naruto. If you guys would watch the video that literally no one watched, you would know that. But it's nice to see something like Yu Yu Hakusho tackle Shonen in a different way. Getting stronger through self-reflection. Finding strength in the ones you love. Not just packing on the muscle just because you can. There is a reason Yu Yu Hakusho is talked about so much. It's freaking good! So at the end of this arc, you see the two men. One powered by love and acceptance, and the other one hate and fear. Tagoro has morphed into a grotesque, muscle-bound freak, whose body is literally killing members of the audience. He is living, breathing toxic masculinity. It's not even subtle anymore. And they fight, and Yusuke wins. Of course he does. Sorry for the spoilers on this near 30 year old property. It's also a shonen, so you know exactly what's gonna happen. And Tagoro is happy he lost. Happy he was wrong. Because the disgusting blood soaked path he was walking on wasn't the correct one. Which means no one has to follow him. Everything he was afraid of death, losing, loneliness. He accepts them all, and he does it with a smile. He lost, and now, maybe the next generation will be better. Of course, it's not that simple though, because in real life, it's not that simple. There will always be another threat, and there will always be things that society lets happen. Worse things than Tagoro. I mean, he's not even that strong in the grand scope of the show. He is middle tier at best. Imagine going through all that just to be told that you basically just beat a Zarbon. Yusuke is a trooper. But just like there will be more demons to fight in Yu Yu Hakusho, toxic masculinity is going to be a thing for quite a while. Dudes getting picked on for what they like, how they act, what they say. And it's sad, but it's getting better. Little by little, people are learning what it really means to be a man. People are growing more open, more compassionate. People like me, and hopefully people like you as well. And Yusuke's journey into being an actual man is told beautifully in Yu Yu Hakusho. Even the theme song speaks to his personal growth of accepting the kindness in his life, and growing comfortable with himself as a person. I don't know where to go. When I feel like crying, it's time to open myself, do something new. I want to stop and grow up a bit. Yusuke died and was given a second chance to reevaluate and look deep into himself and figure out exactly what he needed to change. And he didn't need to get stronger, beat up every kid that came his way, and prove his manliness. 
The only thing he really needed was to feel the touch of a friend. <laughs>